What do creative people living in the Florida Keys like us, who have full-time jobs in order to pay bills, what do you do in your free time to exercise and use your creative brain and feed your creative soul? That's the question, and this podcast will provide answers. My name is Nancy Truesdale. Welcome to Creatives in the Keys. Today I'm with Elizabeth Young. Elizabeth is the Executive Director at the Florida Keys Council of the Arts, and I'm excited to talk to her because, Elizabeth, from what I can tell, the Council is certainly the place to go and the resource to check with if you want to know something about Arts in the Keys. Well, thank you for saying that, and thanks for having me today. We are very proud of the work the Arts Council does throughout Monroe County, and as you just mentioned, the Florida Keys Council of the Arts, so there's lots of Monroe counties all over the country, and we are really delighted to be representing the Florida Keys and be part of the bigger picture of promoting our destination for our arts and culture, and also for making a really dynamic community throughout the keys for our residents. That's exciting to me because, as you know, the focus of this podcast is to help any type of artist get into the the keys and start to feel connected, like this is a place where they could actually make a living and feel vital and part of the community. I'm excited when I I look at your background and your resume, as I did when I snooped on the (laughs) excellent website that the Florida Keys Council of the Arts has. I'm excited to hear a little bit about your background. Can you share? Sure. Let's see. I'll go back to probably high school when I really became entranced with the theater world because my little sister is an actress and a performer, and I found myself doing lots of stage management, which I carried forth into my college life, where I was an art history and theater major, and uh, was an intern with the Manhattan Theater Club my senior year in college, and ended up in their casting department. So after college in Boston, I spent almost 10 years in New York City working in different casting director offices, and so I got to work with a voice voiceover announcers, on-camera actors in the advertising world, and then I worked for some independent casting directors who were casting Broadway and television pilots for NBC and uh, some small film work. And that's what I did. So it's a very much behind the scenes work in the arts. But truly, my job always was about supporting artists and finding work for them. And so the Arts Council, when this job became available after my children were sort of elementary, middle school age, and I was really looking for full time work, and this job came along, it really suits my, I guess, talents or my passion for supporting creative people. That's really, really cool. Thank you. I find that fascinating. I think every artist secretly would love to have done what you did as far as casting. I think that's pretty (laughs) exciting. (laughs) How did you wind up in the Keys? I'm originally from North Chicago, and we had a bunch of Chicago friends that were vacationing and buying property in Key West, and my folks came down and visited them. And I came down during a couple spring breaks with my sister and eventually met met a pretty wonderful man who was already (laughs) settled here. And so I've been here full time since 1987. Wow. So you really do know the lay of the land. I do. And, you know, (laughs) it was really always in Key West until I became the ED of the Arts Council in 2008. And it has really been my great pleasure and honor to get to know all the different communities because they're very distinctive, as you know. And we have been promoting and supporting the different art communities in different ways. I have board members and board advisors throughout the Keys who, you know, keep our eyes on the ground, you know, really in the trenches of support supporting all the arts, all the keys, all the time. And thank you for mentioning our website because it is a great resource and it's, you know, almost a full-time job to keep that up to date and focused and giving all the opportunities to the artists. And, you know, one of the mottos of the Arts Council is connecting artists to their audience and connecting audiences to the different artists. So I know you mentioned supporting artists. You know, we really support all the arts, visual arts, performing arts, literary literary arts, and the historical arts slash museums. So it's a very broad umbrella of support with a challenging geography. 
I think <laughs> like what our, I like to say. <laughs> at our widest point, what are we? A mile? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But we stretch a hundred and what? A hundred and twenty? What do we say? Twenty. Yeah. Right. I always wow. say it's hundred and twenty miles by two miles wide in any given spot. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. important to have a lot of support up and down the key. So I'm very proud of the board members that, you know, serve as volunteers to help guide the organization. That's great. As a creative, what do I need to know about the council? How can the Keys Arts Council help me and what should I be tapping into? Well, I think first and foremost, become a member and there are different levels of support. But the way an arts council functions as the local arts agency is we have some government support from the Board of County Commissioners and the Tourist Development Council for actually being a council to support artists, but our membership is a, you know, our grassroots effort of connecting. We call it friend raising, really, but it does help us garner other grants like our state grant support and a National Endowment for the Arts grant. We definitely need to have grassroots support. So we do that by having a membership. And when you are a member, you really receive all the email blasts and all that sort of access to the information. I mean, it's on our website, but we also find that when you're a member, whether you're a singer or a musician or a visual artist or a writer, we have access to everything that's going on throughout the Keys and also through the, you know, through the statewide and national opportunities that we share with our members. So it's really maybe access to information. And also we offer a lot of grants, which is probably maybe a whole nother other conversation. Sure. But one of the things that we do is we offer grant programs that facilitate learning, growing, experimenting, understanding the creative process for whatever kind of art you're trying to pursue. Uh-huh. I was noting that you have classes that are offered through the council. So is that the kind of thing you're talking about? What we do is we show you, like if you're in Marathon, you know, you can go on our calendar and say, oh, here's a watercolor class or here's a pottery class or I'm in Key West for the winter. You know, I'm renting a house for four months and I want to learn how to write a better book or, you know, whatever it is. And so we were sort of the source of information. The only programming that the Arts Council really does is for our members. So we have an annual meeting. We have our Connections Project, which has our six by six canvases, which is, again, an opportunity to connect the keys through art. It's our vehicle, our programming to have people kind of jump in and try art yes. and then come and celebrate it at our little receptions. And it's something that we can do countywide. But the grant program specifically is we have a special project grant, an artists and schools grant, and a, a larger program, Art Builds Community, for a larger dollar funding. And then we also facilitate the Key West Writers Guild Award, which is an annual award for a work in progress for a Monroe County writer. And so, again, we are the administration behind the arts. We are facilitating the business of arts. So if you're a musician and you're thinking about recording a demo or recording a CD and you need funding to you know, be in a studio or recording studio or pay an extra musician, you could apply for a special project grant that would support a one-time project. We just supported the Tropic Botanical Artists Collective, which is a collective of about 25 artists in the Upper Keys, and they were invited to do a big exhibition in the Everglades Wow! at their Airy Center, and they didn't have funding for the framing and the exhibition, and so we funded that for them, and when they were done with their Everglades exhibit, they actually brought the whole exhibit here intact to the Gato building and exhibited it. How cool is that? It's one of those, you know, really supporting and promoting the arts that are going on. Yeah. And sometimes little things like that well, it might not seem little, but anybody who's ever paid to have something framed knows that's not that little. <laughs> sometimes just things like that could be a barrier. Right. And then putting our logo on your project shows that it's been vetted and please make special attention to attend an event or support right. the event. And very often we'll find that artists will be looking for a matching grant. So 
you know, they say, oh, we got a grant from the Arts Council, but I'm still short on funding. Would you match it? And so they use the opportunity that we've offered them to find more funds because sometimes it's not all enough. So I think that's a, a great way that we show support. Absolutely. Allowing people to make it work in a place that can be very expensive to live. Absolutely. We also, for instance, support our teaching artists in our school programs. So we're very fortunate in Monroe County that our schools have music and art and, you know, really great creative things. But we can go in and enhance a learning opportunity with an art project Okay. on top of the art they're already getting. We have worked for years with the South Florida Symphony Orchestra to bring our children. We, we partner with the school district and the symphony to facilitate the transportation to the theater where the symphony is playing and doing, you know, advanced learning in the classroom. We gave a grant, you know, we give a grant for that every year. We have facilitated for years a great juggling program teaching a lot of concentration and focus and hand-eye coordination, which enhances the PE programs in our school district by sending in some teaching artists. So, That's, you know, a few little ways that we support our artists. Just a huge variety. It's very broad. Yes, it is. You mentioned earlier, so if I'm not an artist and I am perhaps somebody visiting the Keys, how can I use your resources to tap in and find out more about art in the Keys? Well, as we mentioned earlier on our website, keysarts.com, both plural, keysarts, okay. uh, right on our homepage below our slideshow, which, you know, we change every couple months, bringing in new artwork and promoting different arts organizations in our little slideshow. Right below that, there's a couple buttons, and the one that's probably most used is the calendar. It has a huge comprehensive calendar. You can actually narrow it down by fields, you know, by day, by genre. You can look for just theater or just music or just classes. And that is a a huge Rolodex, essentially, of information. Then also under our artist connections, there's some drop-down menus which you could go and look up just all of the nature and botanical things. You can look up just galleries. You can look up, it's sort of the yellow pages of the art. Excellent. And again, that's our responsibility to keep that current. So any of your listeners or people that, you know, you you visit it and you find a, a link that's not working or something that's not perfect, let us know. It's pretty broad and depth throughout the Keys. That's wonderful. And then we also have our weekly calendar that the Key West Citizen publishes in Paradise. We send out an e-blast every single Wednesday, which covers uh, by genre and by region all the things that are going on in Monroe County. If you're a member, you get that automatically. We also send out a hard copy paper brochure called Keys Arts, and that's a quarterly brochure throughout the county, again, by genre. And then I'm on the radio every Wednesday. (laughs) Um, As I had mentioned to you earlier, I do. The Arts Council has a speakers bureau and often with one of my board members, we'll go to a local rotary meeting. We'll go to, you know, Zonta. We'll go to the business and professional women's group. We'll, you know, just speak at the different chambers of commerce to let people know, you know, the rich and vibrant arts community that we have. It's amazing, actually, how much is going on everywhere. I'm glad you brought that up because I've lived several places. I've been fortunate to be here for about 16 years, but this certainly is the place that has had the biggest impact to me on my development because of the rich art culture that's here and the variety. Why is it that way? Why is the Keys such a draw? For artists. People say different reasons. My feeling is we're the end of the road <laughs> and we are very, very accepting. You know, there's a lot of special arts communities around the country sure. and they do seem to be on the edge. You know, Provincetown at the end of the Cape or, you know, spots in California, Seattle, Washington comes to mind. You know, the coast of Maine has some wonderful or, you know, all over the country, obviously, we're pretty, we're pretty lucky. But I do think that there's something very special in the air here. When I speak to my visual artists, they say there's nothing quite like the light, mm. which I think really attracts our visual artists. A lot of people have, you know, likened it to the south of France, you know, that ah. there's this 
very special light here that artists are drawn to. Uh, certainly music 24-7 and the climate. And I think our, our rich literary history is essential, certainly to to the fabric of Key West. Yes. With our literary seminar, you know, 40 plus years, we go back to the visual arts of the WPA Works Administration, you know, that was here in the 30s, mm-hmm. that essentially saved the Keys from being completely, you know, evacuated. Right. So I think, you know, and I do think there's also, you know, after the 60s, 70s and that sort of off the beaten path, maybe hippies yeah. and drug scene. I think that our, you know, when we called it then our gay community, but the LGBT community, that is certainly a creative community, you know, really created a very wonderful accepting community that the Key West certainly and the other keys just, you know, People accept people for who they are. Yeah. And that creativity, you know, is extremely essential to that part of our life here. Sure. So I think I think it's probably a combination, you know, sort of all those little puzzle pieces fitting together. Yeah. You know, it's a big little town, you know, and there is that sort of essence of, oh, Hemingway was here or <laughs> Winslow Homer was here or sure. now we're talking a lot about Elizabeth Bishop or, mm-hmm. you know, in the upper keys, even that sense of like the highwaymen stopped here or, yes. you know, that sort of historical benefit of we made history and we lived here before anybody else did and, mm-hmm. You know, the photography and the, I don't know, sort of open air, natural environment just yeah. appeals to artists. It's very special. That's for sure. Yeah. And you can kind of live off the grid and it doesn't, and it's fine. Yeah. It's a very accepting and welcoming community. Definitely the most that I've ever lived in. And non judgmental, mm-hmm. kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think the ocean and the wildlife and, you know, I think of some of the Upper Keys people who just, they're so drawn to the ocean and the water yes. and the horizon and there's a lot to paint or photograph or observe. Some of the oil paintings you're featuring on the website right now, I recognize John David Hover's work and boy. Talk about light. It's yeah, just stunning. <laughs> it's just stunning. And, and you know, he's somebody, um, just as one example, um, there's many, many, but his art is featured in museums and galleries all over the United States. And, you know, he lives here. <laughs> Right. And again, you know, that's a perfect example of someone who has, you know, lived and worked here for decades. Right. And his work is appreciated and he sells his work and he works in a very large scale. One of his biggest pieces is part of our art and public places program in the Murray Nelson Center. Yes. You know, he has a huge, huge landscape painting in the in the lobby of the Murray Nelson Center that, you know, we were just thrilled to commission and have. Yeah, it's stunning. Yeah. I mean, I just I think also if you're not an artist, you appreciate the arts and you're drawn to it. Yes. Well, I like to direct people to the council whenever they're like, well, what is there to do? I think that just being, like you said, the calendar for the keys of things to do is a huge resource for our community. And as somebody who is not a member, I'm sitting here beating myself up. Why aren't I? I need, I need to join. And I checked you. I checked that out and it's only $50 for the single entry membership. Correct. If I had to pay you a dollar for every time I've accessed your website and got information, I'd be paying you more than $50. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for saying that, yeah, Nancy. It's a huge resource, and I think many locals use it regularly, and uh, I certainly think that anybody who's planning a trip to the Keys will find their trip more enjoyable if they check out that website and the calendar and try to incorporate something from it in their trip. It's a very good resource. Well, absolutely. And, you know, that's a very good point. We often hear, oh, you know, it's the wedding capital of the state. We get so many people getting married here and bringing people down for weeks at a time. And then, you know, our partnership with the Tourist Development Council is one of sharing that information. And so we have our gallery guide. We have the culture magazine that is in every hotel room throughout the Keys, which you know, focuses on that big calendar yeah. and what's going on. And we find that, you know, maybe the people come down because they want to go fishing or relax by the water during the day. They're looking for something to do at night. They're looking for something to buy as a memento of their visit here. And then they come back for longer and longer 
periods of time. And, and we're finding, too, there's almost no off-season in the arts community Yes, uh, in all the keys, especially in the middle and lower keys. You know, our galleries are open year-round, the mm-hmm. Tropic Cinema year-round. Even the Red Barn Theater now has a whole summer stage program that's very well attended. The studios of Key West is open year-round. The museums are open uh, certainly throughout the Keys year-round. Yes. And we're finding even some of the smaller art guilds and watercolor society and plein air painters and you know all the different varieties of things up and down the keys they're extending their membership in season longer and longer yeah there's almost not even a shoulder season anymore right. you know the um almorada art walk is every month now that's the, exactly the third thursday of every month third thursday yeah. exactly so true yeah yeah and i mean you have the history of diving museum open year-round the florida yes. keys history and discovery center you know you've got your your key players doing theater really October to May yep. or April, I think. Yep. We've been seeing, you know, a lot of lecture series at the Murray Nelson Center. Yes. You know, Isla Murata, the galleries are doing doing great work there. The history and of diving museum. Yeah. Like yeah, so phenomenal. Much. She does a year round lecture series too. Yes. Uh, and Marathon, you know, that theater has oh, been completely yeah. renovated since the storm. And they're just doing great and we're so pleased with the Shady Palm Art Gallery that's yes. right on the highway. And Lori is doing a tremendous job supporting so many artists in that space. I mean, she has filled that space and there's jewelry and there's pottery and there's, you know, wall art yes. and sculpture. And she's open 12 months a year. Wow. So we're we're thrilled. Well, if you're interested in art, then why aren't you in the Keys? <laughs> well, there's that too. <laughs> Liz, I can't thank you enough for giving me this time today and be looking for my membership application. Well, thank you. And I hope that we'll do this again. <laughs> Love because to. there's so much more we can talk about. Our Culture Circle series, our Connections Project, all the work that we do on public art. Yes, I would love to, you know, have the opportunity to discuss that with you, too, in the future. So anytime I'm here, be happy to discuss it with you. And, you know, please visit our website if you haven't, keysarts.com. There is a wealth of information there on all of the great artists and arts organizations in the Florida Keys. Excellent. Whether you're one of our regular visitors to the Florida Keys or you can't wait to visit for the first time, you'll want to stay up to date on everything that's going on in the Florida Keys. To learn all the secrets, tips, and the stuff we don't talk about to anyone but each other, visit 43keys.com. Sign up for our newsletter and never miss any of the exciting things we have planned for you. That's 43keys, the number four, the number three, keys.com.